how do you get people to look at your app if there's 300,000 of them? All right, here's, here's a strategy for it. I was at an iPhone developer camp recently, and what a lot of the developers are doing is then they go and they buy Facebook ads, but only for Apple employees. So you could actually buy ads for people specific to a specific industry, specifically for that product. And I had never thought about that, but they're basically buying ads for PR to have somebody select their app as a featured app. I know it starts to get meta, 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 but it, this is kind of what you have to do right now to get through all the noise that's out there. All right, the Trinity of mobile interaction. One is reach, privacy, and retention. For whatever reasons in America, we get rabid if you send us an unwanted text message, don't we? Right? I mean, you would swear somebody had killed our dog if somebody sends us a text message. It's not like that in other countries. Uh, you go down to the islands, you go to Europe, and your mobile provider is going to send you a regular stream of stuff. Um, but for whatever reason, we regard privacy on the mobile device very, very highly, uh, whereas we don't, particularly in the online experience, we, we allow this cross-site scripting and, and the ads that follow us from site to site. We'll look at one of those. This is the iPad. Who here is excited about the iPad? So, nah, a couple of people. So, and that's interesting because a lot of people aren't. I, I think this thing is phenomenal. I'm so excited to have this thing come out. And the reason is because I don't like Kindles. You can't touch them. Um, and they don't have a touch sensitive thing. I spend a decent amount of time on airplanes. A lot of what I'm doing is passive surfing. So to me, this is the perfect airplane review my presentation or uh, sit on the sofa and you know, play Word or whatever I'm doing uh, by iPhone applications. It uses the same operating system as the iPhone, not the, it's not the Mac OS, it is the iPhone app OS. So there's gonna be there. I would encourage you, don't ignore this. Uh, don't ignore this. I know uh, the Hearst Corporation and a lot of different people are working on, you know, different, trying to re-engineer the, the newspaper look for this form factor. Uh, in fact, um, Monday and Tuesday, I'll be in New York because there's a conference up there called Tools of Change. And uh, even if you're not going, you can kind of follow it online. It's by O'Reilly and just talking about the changes in the publishing industry. That matters to us because publishing is usually a product to carry our advertising or to support our business through advertising, right? So don't ignore uh, the iPad. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who are really gonna like that form factor. All right, what is an app? Um, these are third-party apps, they're cheap, interactive, and they're handy. Most of them are free. Um, when my wife got her iPhone, I became immediate tech support because she was trying to install a uh, ski ball Remember that when you were a kid? It's like, you know, it drops in. I do all the sound effects, but really I like you people too much. And it wouldn't install because it was 10 minutes. And it was like $3. And I'd never known my wife to particularly play ski ball. But for whatever reason, she really liked the concept. And the developer that got $3 of us. Um, I know that I use a thing called Uber Twitter on my Blackberry. It's, it's so far the best. Uh, anybody else use Uber Twitter in here? A couple of folks. It's... Um, a free download, they've got ads that are just kind of served in the middle of it, and I don't mind them at all. As far as the future of advertising, also, if you go to CNN.com right now, there's a thing, like third or fourth thing on the menu, it'll say CNN News Pulse. Click on that when you get back. Click on that, and what it does is it shows you, like, the upcoming 10 news headlines, and, like, after three or four, it'll inject a small, unobtrusive banner. Nothing that's, like, taking over your screen and yelling at you and you know, you're afraid to put your mouse over it because, you know, dancing bears are going to come out, right? It's a much more subdued thing, and I find that I actually have clicked on the ads. Make your own app. Making an app, probably to the majority of people in this room, sounds very intimidating, right? For the most people, we were intimidated by this, but there are now these products out there. There's one called AppMaker, A-P-P-M-A-K-R, dot com. And for like $500, you can build a basic app, and then you pay them like a monthly fee of 30 to $50. Now, all they are, really, is RSS readers, but it'll still, it'll get your app in there, and if you, if you can manipulate the RSS stream, you can make it do quite a bit. So they're basic applications, but I would expect to see a lot of growth in this space. So you don't, don't discount uh, app development as part of what you're doing, because once you get to the technical stuff, the technical stuff's not the most important, it's the messaging, right? It's like on, a, on a, any website, the most important element by far is the headline. And I'll see people spend all this time on the color palette and the look and the feel and they don't have a headline. They've got a tagline, but no headline. So there's no compelling call to action. And again, same thing here. So you've got to worry about the strategy more than you've got to worry about whether that it will technically work or not. All right, so what about mobile advertising? 
this is one called, um, this is AdSense right here from mobile content where you can target it. Again, um, if you have not done, by the way, if you've not done Facebook advertising, you've got to do it. You've got to try it. It's hard to get to. Um, when you go to Facebook at the bottom, there's a little link down there that says advertise. That's also the way you create a page. It's too good to be true right now. Like we ran one campaign for like $4,000 that did 24 million impressions. I mean, just the ROI and it's just too great. And make sure you do it cost per click, not cost per impression. Um, and also the, the targeting is pretty amazing. Like I use the example of people just advertising to Apple employees. I mean, what if you could only advertise to people who are on your board of directors? I mean, there's whole new levels of mind games that are being opened up by this targeting. You know, and I know if I was a teenager right now, whew, I'd be dangerous. Um, so take a look at these different ad networks. Um, small screen, big opportunity was the, was the headline there. Now this is a network called AdMob, and they were bought by Google recently. And again, what it is, is it's targeting across mobile applications as well as offline. And one of the things that AdMob does is, have you seen recently, like if you click somewhere, then uh, you'll see that banner ad show up on other websites. And it's been shown to radically increase it. So I, I like photography. And when I first got on Facebook, I refused to click any ads. And I got all these meaningless ads. And then I got on this, I got on this high horse where I'm just like, I'm just going to mark every one of these as offensive if they're not going to target me. And what, what I hadn't realized was Facebook had literally conditioned me to train them how to advertise to me. So I marked as offensive any dating ones because, you know, I'm married, why are you advertising this? Uh, I marked as, you know, uninteresting if it was unrelated, it didn't matter. But then I found that I was clicking on ones for advertising and then one popped up and it was $69,000 for like eight acres in a country on a lake. And that, that is one of those things that hooked me and I clicked on it. Well now it's funny because where I go around and constantly I'm seeing all these ads for photography uh, or for you know country real estate and all sorts of things that I can't afford at this point in my life because I have teenagers. Um, so when you're looking at these marketplaces, you're not just training them on Facebook, you're training across all advertising mediums including the cell phone, right? Because if you're logging into Facebook from your cell phone, they know who you are and then they can use that data to take it back and forth. So check it out, this one's called AdMob. So, how are we rising to use the mobile web? On Haiti, they raised $30 million total um, from their texting. $7 million in the first 36 hours. But interestingly enough, it's still only 14% of total donations. Isn't that surprising? They did, a, they did an amazing job with it, and I know the very first day I did it because you felt like you wanted to do something. Um, and it was just, what, text Haiti to 90999, did I get that right? Uh, and, and you may get a $10 donation. So again, the reason I bring up this story is because it's the interaction of mobile online and offline. And when I was speaking to that youth group, I was talking about the 150 kids, they do not differentiate, by the way, between Facebook messaging, instant messaging, and text messaging. So us geeks are all like, well, it's social media, but oh, text messaging isn't social media. For them, it's just this web of interaction. They're on Twitter, they get a direct message, they reply on Facebook, and then you reply with the text message. I mean, it, it, it all just flows back and forth in this web of communication that, frankly, for us older people, can be a little intimidating. I mean, my, my employees are just, some of them are just figuring out now that I, have, that I, that I do have chat. And I'm like, well, that's funny, because I was chatting on a vax before you were born, kid. But they, you know, what did I do? I pushed them away, because I didn't want my signal to noise ratio. And same thing, I don't put my cell phone on my business card. So these are some of the things that I may have to change. What if I miss a deal because I don't have my cell phone or my business card because somebody wants to reach out to me via text? And again, is that mobile? I don't know. All right, these are three different apps that I really like. This is uh, Top Stains by Tide. And it, it basically, in your pocket, tells you how to remove stains. Right? I mean, it's the ultimate bachelor iPhone app. It's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. You know, because I've got one method of removing stains that I know of, and that's soda water. I'm pretty sure there are other methods. And it's really kind of fun, you know, because you start to wonder, you know, what is wrong with you people? It's like, you know, blood, mud, purple juice. You know, you go through this stuff and like, how did that happen? You know? <laughs> All right. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts has a Dunkin' run. And what you do is you, you text people, they text their orders, and then you walk through it, and then you do the run. And then the last one, it's like, enjoy. And if you hover your mouse over that, it's all like, they're all like kind of dancing. Mm -hmm.